welcome to your deep dive. Today, um, we're diving into something uh, close to my heart, and that is things that you just shouldn't say to an autistic person. We're going beyond like just basic etiquette here. You know, this is about really trying to understand how much words matter. Absolutely. Yeah. It's about fostering inclusivity. And I think that begins with recognizing that like many phrases we use, even if we mean well, often come from these like harmful assumptions about autistic people and what they go through. So let's break that down a bit. What kind of assumptions are we talking about here? Well, a lot of these phrases make it seem like, you know, the experiences of autistic people are somehow like less valid or not as authentic or even something that needs to be fixed like a common one is you're just doing this for attention right so you're basically dismissing their reality like whatever they're experiencing isn't a big deal it's minimizing exactly and it's so important to remember that autistic people they might express themselves differently and their needs they're completely valid it's not about attention seeking and this actually reminds me of when people say you're not really autistic it's like they have the authority to decide that, which is just wild. Yeah, and that can be so hurtful. It's never okay to question a diagnosis like that. Autism is a spectrum, so someone might not fit a certain stereotype, but that doesn't make their experience any less real. It's like telling someone they're not really nearsighted because they don't wear glasses all the time. Yeah. Exactly, and another one that's really damaging is you should just try harder to be normal. It's basically implying that being autistic is inherently wrong, and that sets an impossible standard. Yeah, it's like saying, just change who you are, which is just not realistic or fair. Exactly. There's no one normal. We should be celebrating the unique strengths and viewpoints that autistic individuals bring, not pressuring them to fit in. It's about embracing neurodiversity, mm. not trying to erase it. And this next one really got me thinking, you're so high functioning, you don't seem autistic. What's the issue with that one? Ah, the high functioning label. It creates this false idea that there's like a clear line between those who struggle and those who don't. Truth is how well someone functions, it can change from day to day. So someone could be high functioning at work, but then totally overwhelmed at like a busy grocery store. Exactly. Someone might seem okay on the surface, but on the inside, they're dealing with sensory overload or anxiety. It's like just because you put on a brave face doesn't mean someone isn't struggling. Yep. And telling them to just calm down is just dismissing those feelings, which are very real. Right. And for autistic individuals, those emotions can be really intense. Instead of saying calm down, it's about acknowledging those feelings and validating them. You know, listening with empathy, not judgment. That actually makes me think about how we interpret certain actions, like when someone might be communicating differently and we say, you're so rude. Absolutely. Autistic individuals might communicate in different ways. So instead of jumping to conclusions, we should assume the best, ask for clarification, and be patient. It's a two-way street, right? Communication, I mean. We all need to put in the effort to meet each other halfway. Exactly. And it takes that active listening and a willingness to really try and understand where the other person is coming from. And, you know, that actually kind of leads to another one of those phrases uh, that we should probably stop saying, you're just being difficult. It's just so dismissive, don't you think? Yeah, it really is. And a lot of times it comes from, like, not really getting why those behaviors happen in the first place. I mean, what someone might see as someone being difficult could actually be them trying to cope with sensory overload or struggling to communicate or maybe they're feeling anxious, you know? It's a good reminder to, like... Think beyond just the behavior itself and try to figure out the why behind it. Instead of just labeling someone as difficult, maybe we should be asking, hey, is there something going on? Anything I can do to help? Exactly. That shift going from judging to understanding can make a huge difference. This whole conversation, it's making me realize just how powerful language really is. We might not even realize how much of an impact our words can have, you know. It's true. Words are incredibly powerful. They can really hurt someone, but they can also heal you know, mm. and they can build connections, which is really what we're aiming for here, right? To understand each other better and build stronger connections. For sure. So then how do we even begin to do that? Like, how do we start to dismantle these harmful assumptions and be more thoughtful about our words? Well, I think it starts with educating ourselves, going beyond the stereotypes and really listening to what autistic people have to say. Seek out autistic creators, writers and advocates hear their stories, learn from their experiences, and allow yourself to challenge your own preconceived notions. You're so right. Learning directly from the autistic community is so important. There's no replacement for lived experience. Absolutely. It's also important to remember that autism looks different for everyone. What might be a challenge for one person 
could be a strength for another. There's no single experience, you know. So then how do we navigate all those nuances in language? Like I've heard different opinions on using person first or identity first language, for example. Yeah, that's a great point. And there are valid arguments on both sides. Yeah. Some people prefer person first language, like person with autism, to emphasize that they're not defined by their diagnosis. Others might prefer identity first language, like autistic person, to acknowledge that being autistic is a core part of their identity. That makes a lot of sense. I mean, everyone should be able to choose the language that feels most comfortable and empowering for them to describe their own experience. Exactly. The simplest way to approach it is just ask. Don't assume. Just ask respectfully what language the person prefers. It's a small thing, but it goes a long way in showing respect and creating a safe and inclusive environment. You know, even if you happen to forget or you're not sure in the moment, just acknowledging that and being open to being corrected can really make a difference. Oh, for sure. It shows that you're willing to learn and grow which is important in any relationship, but especially when we're talking about something as sensitive as this. It's amazing, isn't it, how much we can learn when we actually just open up and listen. I, I feel like this whole deep dive has given me a whole new way of thinking about this. Yeah, that's what I love about these kinds of conversations. They push us to really examine our own biases. You know, it's not about being perfect. It's about being willing to learn and grow from our mistakes. Like you were saying earlier, Language can heal and build connections. And I think that's something we need to remember going forward. But honestly, one thing I'm still kind of wrestling with is how to make these conversations, especially about sensitive topics, more open without everyone feeling like they're walking on eggshells. You know what I mean? It is a tough balance, right? Mm -hmm. We want to make sure everyone feels respected, but also be able to really connect with each other. I think it comes down to creating spaces where people feel safe to ask questions, even admit when they just don't know something, and learn from each other without feeling judged, you know? It's less about getting everything perfect and more about just being open to learning and understanding each other. We're all in this together, figuring it out as we go. Exactly. We're human, we make mistakes, and that's okay. It's what we choose to do with those mistakes that matters. Do we shut down or do we use them to learn and grow? We need to make those moments into learning experiences both for ourselves and everyone else. Absolutely. It takes a lot of courage to admit when we're wrong to be vulnerable like that. But when we do, it creates this space for real connection and understanding. This has been such an insightful deep dive. I got so much to think about. Thanks for sharing your knowledge with me and with everyone listening today. My pleasure. And remember, each and every one of us, we all play a part in creating a more inclusive world, a world where everyone feels understood. So true. And on that note, we'll leave you with this. What's one small thing you can do, starting today, to be a little more understanding, a little more inclusive in your own interactions? Something to think about as you go about your day. Until next time, keep those conversations going, keep learning, and keep diving deep.